In this video, we'll be looking at the self-testing emergency light fittings from Knightsbridge and discussing how they can make your installations both simpler and safer. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear the words self-testing emergency lighting, it has a tendency to make my blood run cold because it conjures up thoughts of complex interconnected systems with central control panels or apps that need registering, setting up and synchronising with a cloud service. Well, you can relax. Because like all the best designs, the range of self-testing emergency lighting from Knightsbridge is simple yet effective. So what problem do these fittings solve? Well, emergency lighting is one of those funny areas where you only know if it's working when things go wrong. And this is usually the worst possible time to find out that the emergency lighting isn't working. Therefore, emergency lighting needs to be tested on a regular basis in controlled conditions to make sure that it's going to respond correctly when it's needed. The Electrician's Guide to Emergency Lighting, published by the IET, gives some direction on this, and it consists of three main stages. The first is a daily visual operational check to see if, for example, the LED indicator is illuminated. Then, a monthly installation functional check, often referred to as a flick test, to confirm that the fitting switches into emergency mode when power is lost. This is usually carried out by means of a key switch that disconnects the power to the fitting. Then, there's an annual, full-rated duration test to make sure the emergency lights remain illuminated for the required period of time, three hours being a typical value for this. And of course, all of this will need to be documented and recorded into a logbook for the emergency fittings. So all of that requires a fair bit of time, but it can be made easier by the use of these excellent self-test fittings from Knightsbridge. You install them and connect them up as you would a standard light fitting, and then once you power them up, the self-test function goes into operation. After the fitting has been powered for 24 hours, it will carry out a three hour full duration test to make sure that it's operating correctly, before going back into normal operating and charging mode. Then, every 28 days, it will carry out a 30 second function test, similar to the flick test described earlier. Then, once every 52 weeks, it will carry out a three hour duration test. Now, this is all well and good, but how do you know that any of these tests has been successful, or if any part of an emergency light fitting needs replacing? Well, this is where the simplicity comes in, because the fittings don't require complicated connections or synchronizing to an app or anything like that. They're just standalone units that show you, with a simple LED indicator, the results of a test. Now, what I've done with these fittings here is simulate a couple of typical faults that might occur from time to time with emergency lights. It also gives me the opportunity to demonstrate that you can still carry out a monthly flick type test or an annual full duration test manually, should you need to for some reason. Now this first fitting, I've messed with the battery a little bit so that it won't work properly. And now if I press the test button for approximately five seconds, it will carry out a 30 second monthly type test. And then you can see that the indicator LED is now giving a red flash to indicate that the battery isn't working properly. This fitting here, I've deliberately disconnected the light output. And so if I press the test button again for approximately five seconds, it'll carry out that monthly flick style test and you can see once that's been completed, the LED flashes red twice to indicate that there's something wrong with the lamp. Now, I can't imagine that even our most dedicated viewers will want to watch this fitting try to pass a three hour duration test just to see what the LED does should one of these fittings fail at that. So I'll just tell you that it flashes three times red. So by using this self-test type of fitting, the responsible person for an installation can now go round and check the status of the LEDs on a daily basis, and if it's blinking red once, twice, or three times, they know that the fitting has not passed a test and get an electrician in to investigate further. It's so much easier than having key switches and scheduling time to manually check that fittings are passing three hour duration tests. There's an additional benefit for the installation electrician as well, because it means that your commissioning can be completed by just powering the fitting up, then returning to it after a couple of days. If the LED indicator is green, you know it's passed an initial three hour duration test after 24 hours. Happy days. So far from being a complicated system to set up, operate and maintain, it's actually simpler than installing a traditional system. There's a tendency in the industry that if you replace a single faulty emergency fitting in a building, then you go for a like-for-like -like swap. But maybe, seeing how simple this system is, if you're responsible for the electrical maintenance of a whole property, you might be tempted to replace a standard emergency for one of these from Knightsbridge with a self-test function, meaning that slowly but surely, 
the whole property will switch over to self-testing time, saving the labour costs that are associated with traditional emergency light testing. Careful collaboration with whoever is in charge of the daily checks will ensure a smooth transition to the new system. So there we go, self-test emergency fittings from Knightsbridge. This is a range that we believe will make electricians' lives easier, and we like that. But of course, we want to hear from you. Is the thought of a simple self-test system such as this one from Knightsbridge appealing? Will you be making the switch over to self-test fittings yourself? Whatever your opinion, please leave your questions and comments below. And all that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching. Thank <laughs> you.